Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft 365 Certified Expert Administrator. I do a lot of content around the MSP space, showing you guys how to implement things for your customers. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over Windows Information Protection. So this is going to be pretty demo heavy. I'm inside here of a M365 business tenant. I like to use this as an example. One, just it covers the SMB market, um, but also is comes with the Intune licensing you will need for the app protection policy we are going to create. So Windows Information Protection or WIP um, as I like to call it here is something that you can set up to help with DLP um, and prevent users from copying and pasting data into unmanaged applications uh, or actually uploading files to unmanaged applications as well too. So within this portal here what you're going to want to do is go into the device management admin portal and for some reason if you don't see this tab you can always go to portal.azure.com and look for Intune and when you pull up Intune you'll see everything that I'm seeing here uh, just on another blade versus a single pane of glass so within this portal here what we're going to do is go over to the client app section and just to preface this while this is coming up here uh, this does have to be Windows 10 uh, computer, it's uh, endpoint protection for Windows 10, and the device does need to be enrolled into Intune for these things to actually work. Um, so you can join a device to Azure AD, and if you set up auto enrollment to Intune, uh, these policies will automatically start applying to the users that you select. So we're going to go into app protection policies here. I've already set one up uh, just to enhance the demo a little bit more, saying the end user functionality. But normally in here, you're not going to have anything, so you would go to Create Policy. And for this, you do see can apply to uh, iPad and Android as well, too. This video, I'm going to be showing you just around Windows 10. So um, we can just call this, I'm just going to call it actually Whip. And I'm not going to add any type of description there. So you notice here it shows with or without enrollment. Um, so this could be something that you do apply for uh, MAM policies and these are uh, policies that you can push out to people who aren't necessarily fully enrolled into Intune um, but you still manage the application level itself which is regarding like Teams, Word, SharePoint Online, OneDrive, things of that nature. In this case, I always like to do with enrollment, uh, just encompass devices that I know are already enrolled with Intune. You can come in here and you can go to uh, add applications here, and this is going to view uh, add and, and list applications one at a time if you click on add apps, or you can click on import apps, and you can specify a file if you want to import line of business applications or applications that are on-prem. So when you click on add, it's going to have a list of recommended apps here based off of what's been recognized in the company where corporate data is located. So normally um, you would come in here and you can just go ahead and select all the recommended apps. Um, but if you didn't want to, you could do certain desktop applications and name the publisher and all that kind of thing here. Um, or you could say store apps and define what that is from the, uh, this is from the um, store for business app, Windows store for business. So in this case, most of the time, again, you can do the recommended apps. And you can click on OK here and define any uh, apps to exempt. Um, so these won't be protected. And this could be something where you don't exactly uh, want to block access to corporate data from being shared to other applications. So required settings here, this is pretty important. Uh, if you're just rolling this out to people, there's a couple of ones that I recommend uh, to do initially here is either silent or allow overrides. So silent by default is not going to block anybody from doing anything, um, but it does log the, the entries here of when it detects somebody taking something that is labeled as corporate data and sharing it with a non-trusted application or a protected app, as you see here. Allow overrides uh, will basically prompt the user to say, hey, this is an untrusted location, you shouldn't be doing this. But the user can still say, okay, well, I don't care, I'm still going to do that. This is a good scenario where you have pretty trustworthy users and uh, they just need a, a little bit of a reminder not to do that. Um, just by second nature, if somebody's going to 
add an attachment to their personal Google account um, in Gmail or something like that, you may not be thinking of the security considerations around that, just need a lighter touch than completely blocking altogether. So blocking altogether is going to just come up with a message that says that your organization doesn't allow you to do this and they can't move forward from there. So be careful with this. I recommend slowly rolling this out to your customers, maybe doing silent first to gather the log data of what that looks like, moving to allow overrides or blocking it maybe for certain scopes of users um, that you want there. So you can click on OK. We are going to be able, after we create this policy, to scope it to either all users or certain groups or something like that. So maybe you do a more restrictive policy for uh, your users that um, need a little bit more heightened guidance around that or they're just not trustworthy enough to allow overrides. So I'm going to go ahead and block just as an example. These advanced settings here you can set up. The biggest one that I like to turn on is this enterprise data protection icon. Um, it basically like it's saying here will let the user know they're uh, using a corporate app that is uh, being protected there so they know when they sign in and also if they have uh, folders that are being protected locally they'll see this icon as well too which I will show you guys here shortly. So you can add any network boundaries here uh, that you want and this could be something where you want to add uh, certain resources like the cloud resources, the protected domains, proxy servers if you're running a hybrid environment, something like that um, you can configure here. And by default, if you're just wanting to do cloud resources, uh, you do want to put in uh, the SharePoint URLs and things like that. So I will show you after I configure this, um, after I, I get through this, what, what that looks like. But by default, you should be adding those if you're doing just cloud applications. So these couple of settings here, I'd like to leave off. Um, so it's not going to auto-detect proxy servers or IP ranges. You can do that if you like, um, but it's not a requirement. The data recovery agent is recommended, but not a requirement as well, too. You can follow the steps outlined here to go ahead and uh, create that certificate and attach it if you want. It's recommended by Microsoft, but again, not a requirement. Um, this is particularly to Windows 10 mobile devices, so I don't really worry about that. Um, revoke encrypt encryption keys on unenroll. Uh, this, again, if you unenroll a device from this policy, it will revoke those encryption keys, and normally that's going to be your best practice. But again, carefully evaluate that before you turn this on. Um, show enterprise data protection icon, we went over that. Use Azure RMS for WIP. Um, so by default, this is already using its own native encryption. Um, but if you'd rather use uh, rights management service for uh, the encryption piece of it, you can for using that fully. And you can use one of the template IDs you've created. I'm not going to show you in this video how to do that, uh, just because it's outside of the scope. But it is something available to you. Um, and then search indexer, you can find certain uh, file extensions and things of that nature. So I can click on create here and this will create my policy and as you notice it'll say deployed yes or no and by deploying it you are assigning it to a scope of users. So before we move into uh, that I just wanted to show you here in the one that I already created I created one and I named it SharePoint um, but this encompasses the uh, URLs that you would want to add here or else you're going to see some, some buggy nature um, by default if you don't add these. So your domain.sharepoint.com and then the admin URL, which is your domain-my.sharepoint.com uh, and then the regular uh, one again is, is shown there. Um, so be careful uh, and be sure to add all of these here. You're going to need that and if you're doing all cloud apps. You can add the other network boundaries if you'd like as well too. Back within the policy itself, the biggest thing you have to do after you create it is again scope it to your certain users of which you want to assign it to. Um, so again, be careful about that. Do a pilot test first. Make sure all the settings are configured correctly and it's working fine um, and then move to a broader broader scope. So I just wanted to show you this is a, a device that was enrolled and has been assigned the policy. 
So once you define that policy and assign it, you'll see a couple of things will change immediately based off the settings that we selected. So one, this new column shows up here that shows file ownership and it shows our com corporate domain listed here. And this will automatically apply to OneDrive. And also if you've done a known folder move with OneDrive and added all of your uh, known folders here like your documents, pictures, and all that, it'll automatically start tagging these documents as T-365 or the corporate identity. And you'll also notice that icon we turned on as well too that shows that this is protected by the corporate policy that we created. So a couple of different things that the end user could see as well too if they go into a folder that isn't necessarily um, owned right here. You'll see file ownership is just personal. They can come in and they can choose to switch this over to a personal um, a particular document or folder or anything like that and uh, that will then be protected as well too in addition to the uh, ones that are already under the known folder move or the OneDrive account or something of that nature. So another thing that's uh, pretty cool with it here, this is a Gmail account I got behind me here. Um, and you can see within here I could open up a new message and within here, let's say I want to go ahead and attach a document. I can come in and I can select one of these documents. File ownership is again me. and click on open here and again I since I selected block it's going to tell me that I can't use my content here. So that's one feature. The other one is let's say this is a Word doc that's again associated to my OneDrive, associated with my corporate identity. I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, the information here and I'm going to go back to Gmail and I'm just going to paste it. Again, I am blocked from doing so. So I can't attach anything, I can't put in any content across and that works for all of the applications, right? So if I have, um, let's say within Teams here, I go in and I want to copy a, a message somebody has sent me. This is just a bot, um, but same thing would apply. I copy and I try to paste it in here and it's telling me that it doesn't allow me to paste that content. So the apps you define, um, people aren't going to be able to copy and paste anything there no matter what. Even in, uh, let's say, the download section, right? So if we go into a Teams channel, we say, all right, this is the sample data. I want to go ahead and check this and I am going to download it. Alright, so now that it's in my downloads folder, I'm going to go back to Gmail. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go to my downloads. Choose the sample data. Immediately though, even though my downloads isn't known folder move, uh, it's also recognizing the file ownership as being corporate. And again, I don't have the ability to add it to uh, this particular application. So this works across all applications. This is Gmail, it's a good example. Um, but if you have you know, Notepad, for instance, would work the same way. Or if people try to open up a Word doc or some type of corporate document in another app that's not trusted, it will also block them from doing so there. That's everything I wanted to show you guys from a demo standpoint. If you do have any questions, feel free to comment below on uh, this video. Thanks and have a great day.